Hi everyone, it's Abby. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to add your library card to your Kobo so that you can directly add books to your Kobo without even going on the Libby app. And we're going to be using Overdrive, which is built into your Kobo, which is awesome. So to add your card, you hit the more button at the bottom and then you hit settings and then you'll see overdrive tab. From there, you're going to hit get started. Then it's going to bring you to this next page where you're going to hit add library. I have two library cards, one for New York Public Library, so I'm going to go ahead and put that one in. I also have one for Florida as well. You can choose to sign in via a QR code with your phone or you can just hit sign in on this device, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to head and tap sign in on this device because I know my login information. So I'm just going to put in my card number and my PIN and then you'll be all set for borrowing. You're going to hit browse or search. I like to do the browse feature when I'm on Libby so I'm going to test it out here and this is where we can see all of the collections that have been made by the New York Public Library or whatever your public library is. They make their own collections by the librarians and so you can kind of just see like what their ideas are what you should be reading. I always pretty much like anything on book talk so I'm gonna go to that and I'm gonna just select a book. I've been hearing a lot about A Good Girl's Guide to Murder so I'm gonna just select that one since it's available and I'm gonna add it especially since it's been on Netflix. I might read the book first and then binge watch the Netflix show. So it will say connecting and then you've checked out an item, you hit go to books and now it's going to download and it will be in your books. And when your time up from renting the book, it will just disappear. So this, I have this book now and it will expire in 20 days. And in order to use multiple library cards, you actually have to sign out and sign back in. But whatever you've already saved to your device, it's going to stay, stay there until your time is up for renting the book. So when I first loaded the book up, you can see that the auto sizing for me was just really small. So I just kind of played around with different settings. I had to look through all the different fonts to see what was available. And I kind of like the um, Rakuten Kobo font. So I think I'm going to just start reading all my books. I'm sorry, it's called Rat Rakuten Sans. And I'm going to just start reading all my books in Rakuten Sans because... I don't know, I just, I just really like how clean and crisp it is. So um, what's really cool is you can adjust like the size, the line spacing. I love having the line spacing really large so that I can kind of write in between the lines. And whenever I have start a new book in Kobo, I've been just documenting the time and date that I start the book just because I just think it's a really fun way to kind of look back at like when you started the book. I felt like the text was still a little bit too small so I just sized it up a little bit and now I feel like this is the perfect size for me to just annotate in between the lines but that's literally it guys. It's so simple and easy to add a book from the library. Now this integration is definitely seamless when it comes to adding a book that's available. I will say that in comparison to to the Libby app it's definitely not user friendly because Libby app you can kind of just browse and filter things out but overall I think it's actually quite easy to add books to your Kobo as you can see I did it in less than three minutes so if you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys in the next video very soon bye